Do you grow into who you are, or do you build who you are? I've been thinking about this a lot over the weekend, and I've discovered both in my life, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't believe either way, really. Um, if you look at it from an epigenetic standpoint, right, you're born into whatever genetics you have. There's a kind of a set path there, a determinism in a way. But epigenetics, a field of research having to do with gene expression, so uh, certain catalysts in your life will cause your genetic code to produce different sets of proteins and thus change your behavior, your body composition, uh, characteristics, all kinds of things, right? Your genetics you know, make up who you are in a lot of ways. Um, and so how they are expressing themselves will change you, right? So look it up, epigenetics. There's, there's a lot of info online about it. And in that regard, Hmm, I guess you would be discovering yourself, right? As you age, as you experience more, you grow and discover that genetic expression of self. Okay, but then there's a chicken and an egg problem, right? Um, yeah, you chose to eat more vegetables and exercise, and now this specific gene group is expressing itself more, so you become more like this thing. Well, what caused that? Was there some kind of genetic proclivity towards eating vegetables and exercising that then led to the expression of further awesomeness? <laughs> and, and therefore it's deterministic and you're just d discovering who you are? Or was your, your choice to do more cardio and eat your carrots, was that a catalyst for the change and thus you're building your new character? Now that's a very niche idea for what we're talking about today. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. In my adult life, as you become more self-aware, right? <laughs> you grow up around the age of 32. And uh, in my adult life, I realized there's a lot about me I don't like. Have you ever been having a conversation with someone? And you're saying things. And as you're saying them, you're like, why did I say that? Why? <laughs> I, I have no idea why I would talk about these things. Or um, alternatively, you're the dude talking about the weather. And <laughs> you realize like no one can see in here. No one has any idea what's going on behind your eyes, ever. And there's a beauty to that in privacy, sure. But it also means that other people cannot form any kind of opinion on you based on who you believe you really are. They only get what you present. They only hear what you talk about. So you might have one million things upstairs, but only 10 things come out. And those 10 things might not even be things you're interested in. And I, I noticed that over you know the last decade, I can't tell you exactly when I noticed it, but I was like, huh, I, I don't like this certain attribute about myself, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, the way you say things or what you're talking about, or why would I choose to talk about this with these people? That's not what's on my mind, and that doesn't really encompass everything that I'm thinking about. It's just something I was putting out there. And that's just one example, right, conversation. But I discovered this about myself. I, I didn't choose to be that way. I was choosing it at the time, but I, I guess what I'm saying is the thing that's in your head that you think of as you is probably very different from what you're presenting out into the world. And so when you discover what is actually presented out to the world, there's a dichotomy there, right? <laughs> probably not 100% alignment between who you think you are, who you want to be, and who you're actually presenting. And so as you discover who you're presenting, you're kind of discovering yourself because that's, that's the thing that is actually out there that others can... Um, uh, corroborate they can they can confirm is in the world like who is Luke it's who everyone sees it's not necessarily who you're trying to be or who you think you are it's who everyone sees and then you have questions like well is that the essence of Luke well I mean you've got one witness who says no and you have I don't know how many people are on the world like 8 billion other people 
Uh, I, they don't all know me, but eight billion other people who go, oh, that's not Luke. Luke's nothing like that. Luke's actually like this. So I guess this turns into a question of self-identity, self-creation, and wondering where you are in that whole scheme of things. Are you the person in here? Are you the person that you're aspiring to be and you're like a pupa form moving towards that? Or is the summation of you just that social representation of all your words, all your actions, that puppet of public perception? And is there a difference between the three? I mean, if you have lofty goals, right, you're, you're trying to become something greater well then yes, there's a difference between the thing you think you are and what you're trying to get to. And there's all kinds of psychological dilemmas there, you know, being happy with where you are versus where you're trying to go, sure. Um, but ideally, you would be in a place where those three things align. You would have aspirations, but you would be in a place where you respect yourself enough to be the person that you look up to. And you conduct yourself in such a way that that public image aligns with those first two as well. Everything you do in public would be the ideal self. And so are you constructed or are you made and then you discover yourself as you age? I just thought of this. You probably want to ask people who have been in very stressful situations. You probably want to talk to soldiers, first responders. Think about it. There's explosions, there's fire, there's people screaming for help. You find out real quick what kind of person you are when someone yells for help. Are you the person who jumps into action and helps them? Do you get scared and run away? Do you freeze? And I think that is the answer to that question. Do you discover yourself or do you build yourself up? I think you discover yourself. Sorry, quick jump away. Um, so I think you discover who you are, but I think there are little nudges you give yourself along the way, kind of like a, a boat floating down a river. No matter what, the river's taking you to a certain place, but you can kind of choose how you paddle, you know, what direction the boat is turning in. Uh, kind of a cop-out answer. It's both, but uh, I think there's a lot more determinism in it than we give ourselves credit for. Uh, <laughs> kind of reverse that. It's, it's like we assume we're the commanders of our lives at all times, but maybe we're more of just a paddle on a giant cargo ship. So I hope whoever you're discovering as you, as you age and critique yourself and become more self-aware at that ripe age of 32, uh, I hope whoever you're discovering is someone that you admire. I hope that it's someone you can respect and look up to and in the things that you dislike you can gradually shift into a uh, series of actions that you do actually like and respect uh, ever since I first had that thought you know I noticed things about myself that I just don't like uh, I've worked to change them I've worked to improve to to get a little bit better every day <laughs> and it was a very scary sensation, realizing that who I actually am, that public perception, right? Who I actually am is someone that I don't even like. And so I, I hope you're not in that situation. And if you are, you have mercy for yourself because moving forward, maybe your river goes in a direction you like. Take care of yourself. Have a good day.